and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, a very unusual video this time for us. I'm going to do an unboxing video. And um, these are normally done, obviously, by people who uh, are unwrapping new tech items. <laughs> That's not really our stock in trade, but we've been sent a new book by Simon & Schuster, the American puzzle publication imprint. So without further ado, I'm going to open it um, box from all the way across the Atlantic. And inside is um, a little presentation box, which is lovely. Puzzle Snacks, more than 100 clever bite-sized puzzles for every solver by Eric Berlin. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I think Based on what I know of Eric Berlin, a, a notable in the field of uh, crossword puzzles, he's specialised in puzzles that aren't in kind of traditional crossword style or shape, but use American style crossword clues. And here's the book inside the puzzle. Inside, sorry, inside the box. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny. On the side of the box, it says bite size brain teasers have fun. But it actually says bite-sized brain teasters. Never mind. Um, on the book itself, it spells brain teasers fine. And here we are. Puzzle Snacks. More than 100 clever bite-sized puzzles for every silver by Eric Berlin. And here's the book. A little card from the publishers. Dear Mark, hope you and your fans enjoy Puzzle Snacks. And um, on every page, let's get to the puzzles. Here they are. We have, as you can see, different puzzle styles and shapes and grids where you cross out letters instead of putting them in or just add letters. And they fit together in different ways. Um, what I plan to do is to kind of type one of these out and solve it for you. Um, don't know which one we'll choose yet. Could be something like this. What's this? A, a labyrinth where... It's two sets of clues, uh, rows and path. So the rows work with the numbered rows in the grid, one to nine, and the path follows the labyrinth path set out. I mean, very impressive to create a grid of that shape. Um, and as we go on, there's a checkerboard and shape shifters, one, two, three, for starters. All sorts of puzzles here. I mean, it's fascinating mix. Now, my guess is that these are going to be, as as the box said, kind of bite-sized puzzles. I think rather than a really hard test, these are more likely to be kind of snack, kind of filling puzzles in a way where you can do them in a little while. So this one, this one, I, I know that I could format something like that at least, to and fro. Um, and half the entries in the puzzle are entered backwards, so that could be an interesting test. We might choose that one. Um, one, two, three. Lots, lots of different puzzle types. I mean, it's really quite exciting to get a new book with so many different puzzle types in it because variety really can make puzzles. Now, the clues, they're all the American style of clues, kind of definitions, um, fairly straightforward or slightly quiz questiony or um, examples, but relatively straightforward. So we're not looking at cryptic clues here particularly, but lovely new book. I mean, I like the layout. I like the format. I like the fact that we get one free to show to you. And uh, it's very interesting. You know, I'll certainly be solving a lot of these myself and uh, seeing how they go. Double acrostics, they're quite fun. Um, although they're called You Can Quote Me Here. Um, looking forward to it. So there you go. If you're interested in this sort of book, it's. I think this one will be a very good one. Just out, as I say, this last week, published by Simon & Schuster or one of their imprints, Tiller Press, um, and sells in the US for $12.99. Um, I'm sure you can get it from Amazon or from Tiller Press Direct. So... Looking forward to it. Thanks very much to them for sending it. And uh, I'm, I'm going to type one of the puzzles up or produce it in some way. And I'll be back in a moment to show you a solve of that. So do um, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this sort of content or let us know what you think of it. See you again in a moment. 
So here we go. I've copied puzzle 81 to and fro into, um, well, into Word. Uh, so I'm afraid we can't offer this as a puzzle um, in our software, which really only does Sudoku type puzzles, I'm afraid at the moment. But um, if you want to have a go at it, you could copy down the grid and do so while I have the clues up on the screen. Now, remember, the rules are exactly half of the words in this crossword will be entered normally, but the other half will be entered backward, which is to say from left to right for cross entries or from the bottom to the top for down entries. And here's the grid. I've got a form of that, as I say, in other software, and the clues are here. So I'm going to bring up this, the grid here and have a go at these clues. So one across, write your name on a contract, say. Um, uh, four letters, that looks like sign. Now, if one down, motive for doing something is reason, they would both have to be backwards. Um, that would put a G here uh, to metric unit of mass, yes, gram. So that kind of makes me think we've got all those right. And two of them have gone in backwards already. Uh, I'm trying to spell reason backwards. I think that's right. Now, three down with an I. Look closely at perhaps for flaws. That looks like inspect. Eight across. Little Rock is its capital. I know some US geography, so I know that's Arkansas. Uh, nine across. Amps make music louder at a concert. How about 11? I have no idea. Two words. <laughs> well, appropriately, I have no idea for that one. So I would have thought something like don't know, but uh, no. 13 across. Slip you get along with your purchase when it's received. Um, I don't think that's got a different American spelling from the British one. Four down. Oh, great time in slang, but this is a silly one to try because it's got an A in the middle. So even though I think that's blast, I don't know which way round it is. But let's say it's this way round. And I say that because four across says use your teeth on. So rather than gnaw, which I first thought of, I think that's bite. Six down. Put into a computer's memory. Well, I would have said store, but that doesn't work. Um, something A, something E. It's almost certainly backwards. Don't know. Seven across. One string in a string quartet. Well, with that N and L, I think that's violin backwards. Uh, so save, obviously, put in a computer's memory. Well done if you got that before me, but that's embarrassing. Uh, something badge. I suppose. Okay, well, that must be a merit badge. Now, that is an American term I don't necessarily know. I have no idea. Ah, oh, yeah, look at those letters in 11 across, E, T, and M there. And well done if you can see that that beats me. Nice slang phrase. 10 down. Astronomical event where, for instance, the sun is blocked by the moon. Well, that's very clear. That must be an eclipse. That's clearly written backwards. 12 down, safe to consume. Ah, well, I can see that's edible, but what I can't see is which way round it goes yet. So I can just fill in the E at the end. 22 across, Boy with a Dragon in a 2016 Disney movie. Pete's Dragon, I can't believe that's as late as 2016. Seems to me to have been much older. But there we go. Maybe there was a live action remake. Um, 18 down, Corrode as Old Metal. That's clearly Rust. Um, 17 across, coloured part of the eye is the iris, and that one's backwards, so now we know which way round edible goes. In this crossword, more than many, the crossing of the letters helps, because it doesn't just help you get the word, it helps you know which way round it must be. Oh, 19, centre of an archery target. Well, I'd have always called that the bullseye or the gold, but it looks like it must be in B-U-C. Hmm. And there's only one other that really definitely helps get here. Makes sounds... Oh, well, I've spelled eclipse the wrong way around. There's the problem. So the centre of an archery target is a bullseye. You do have to be careful with these backwards writing to get the words the right way, to get the letters in the words the right way around. For some reason, combinations of vowels and consonants are particularly difficult to sort out. So the home to the... Great Pyramids and the Sphinx, a straightforward geography quiz question is Egypt. 15 down, walkway in a theatre or an airplane, that must be aisle. 
And you'll notice that my version of Word has the, doesn't like the American spellings of coloured, centre and theatre, but there we go. 20 across. So make sounds like a bird. That's chirps now. Um, and we're near... No, I've got those consonants the wrong way around as well. We're nearly there now. 16 down. Dirty, untidy clutter. Must be mess. And 21 across. Must be backwards. Picnic pests, I guess, then. And there we go. That's to and fro, puzzle number 81 done from Puzzle Snacks. So, I mean, good fun. Not, as I say, extremely taxing puzzles, but nice for a quick snack, a quick tea break or something. And uh, thanks so much to Simon and Schuster for sending that. Um, if that's the sort of thing you like, get hold of them or go through Amazon and get hold of a copy as soon as you can. It looks like a really good book, and I'm going to look forward to um, having go at lots of the other puzzles. Um, not going to commit to doing them all, but who knows? Sometimes that happens in the end. Thanks very much for watching um, our first unboxing video, and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, do subscribe if you like the content, and uh, let us know in the comments if uh, you have preferences. Thanks very much for now. Bye.